Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Silver Springs, Nevada. Beautiful day, next to no wind. We're heading up to the High Sierra Fly-In, basically nerd fest for bush pilots. So we're gonna be there all week. So let's get going. Well, I just landed here a couple minutes ago just to get fuel, obviously. I wanted to be just topped off before I headed up to the High Sierra Fly-In. And they said the wind was calm. There was maybe like, I don't know, three knots. <laughs> it was like my worst landing that I've had in like 10 years. What is traffic, maybe helicopter 700 is transiting east along the highway at 1,000, at 5,200 feet and is clear to the west. All right, let's see where we're heading out. Outbound track is going to be 312. No, that ain't right. 308, that sounds better. All right, let's just go through these real quick. Brakes are good, flaps are good, trim is getting set up. We'll do a mission check. All's good, and idle check. And we are charging. Silver Springs, Kit Fox, 24 Kilo Bravo. We'll be departing runway 24 to the north, northwest. Silver Springs. So the helicopter is just over there. There we, there we go. go. You guys can follow along. Two degrees of flaps. Trim is set. Made our call. All right, here we go. Looks like we can still have maybe maybe a three knot tailwind at most. Get these flaps out, get climbing up, get out of here. This is why I don't like wearing this headset, because you have to have these sunglasses at an angle, otherwise the A&R doesn't quite work very well. Whew, let's get these vents open. All the way out here from Kingman, Arizona, I've been at 8,500 feet where it's been like 57 degrees out. Absolutely perfect. Right now, what is it? 72 degrees, <laughs> really not that hot, but warm enough. Silver Springs, traffic at Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, making a right hand turn out, outbound track will be 308, Silver Springs. So I've already done about four and a half hours of flying up to this point today, but you, you guys have already seen those videos coming back from Oregon, if not you guys can go check those out when I bought the plane and flew it, black, <laughs> flew it back. There's not that much to look at, to be honest, but I thought this would be a little bit more interesting because this is going into a high Sierra fly-in. There's probably, there's a little bit different of a procedure. We'll go over here in just a minute. And uh, yeah, I wanted to bring you guys along so you guys could see what it's like to go to high Sierra fly-in. I'm gonna do a lot of walk-arounds, probably a lot of videos, just meeting other people, seeing their airplanes, talking about their airplanes, things like that. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that extra like bush airplane content. So let's go ahead and just set up our DG here at 308. We've got autopilot now. At least my, um, my roll access, I have autopilot. My altitude hold is still not working. It, I was playing around with it on the way out here to see if I could adjust like the servos and things like that. It doesn't even feel like it's engaging, so that's something I'm gonna have to look into. We'll just stay here at 6,000 MSL, which is, well, only about 1,500 foot AGL. I think that should get us over top of what we need to get over. Actually, let me just zoom in and take a look. Actually, we got a 6,600 peak right there. After that, maybe 6,000 looks like it's the highest, so. Let's just go ahead and level off here. There's no point going up higher unless it's just maybe to get away from a little bit of bumps that are annoying. Bring our power right here. 5,200 RPM. Check for leaking fuel now that I'm up here. I now rock the wings and run my hand up behind 
the fuel caps. I did replace all of the seals. If you saw the one that I had leaking fuel, I have fixed that already, so that's not an issue anymore. You guys can see here on the chart, this big magenta ring, that is Reno's Class C airspace. Now, I don't have ADSB out, so I'm gonna be, well, obviously, I'm gonna be going around it, but my track doesn't even put me through it anyway. Let's go ahead and flip on the autopilot. Get it set up for at least where I'm tracking. We're gonna be tracking 308. Looks like these mountains up here I might not be able to get over. Chase traffic count seven, sorry, Navy helicopter seven zero zero is uh, inbound for right base runway two three low approach runway two three and departing to the southwest. Safe track. But what I do need to do is go over I've already done this a few times, but going over this with you guys here, this, there's an actual arrival. It's called the Stoll Tab, kind of like a no tab, but for Stoll stuff. We're going up to Dead Cow Lake Bed. And we're coming in from the south, so we're heading to Saddle. Okay, so it says all arrivals will be entering at 5,000 feet, which is just a 1,000 foot AGL. From the south, we proceed to Saddle and then on to West Point, which is just continuing on up north and then joining into a right downwind. Now there's three runways there, and we want to do the one that's, well, what we'll see is the furthest one on the left, which is a longer one. The other ones they use for like the stall drag and short takeoff and landing competitions and things like that. So, okay, so there's two different arrivals. So for landing from the south, or to the south, I'm sorry. All right, so when we come in, we're gonna be on radio frequency, East 1234. Let's go ahead and set that up now. 1234. That's going to be the first one. And then within five miles, 12272. So let's get that 72. 12272. Okay. And when we give them our initial contact, we're going to say we have um, initial contact or with information Tango. That's just letting them know that we have actually read this so that we know the procedure to get in there safely with all the other airplanes. So it looks like the winds right now are coming out of the, more of like the southeast because I'm indicating 92 and I've got a 97 on the ground speed. So that would mean that I've got around a five knot tailwind at this point. But maybe we'll be able to get some updrafts to help me get over top of this. It looks like I'm just seeing the ridges on the other side which is an indication that the more I'm seeing, that means I am going to clear it. But that also means that we'll probably have some swirls of air that affect this plane actually quite a bit. As you can see, it's, this is just bump, bumping around. The only thing with this Stratex uh, link with my Garmin today, looking for traffic, is that there's probably not going to be well, if there is planes coming in today up here, the whole event starts, I think, tomorrow, officially, but it starts at like nine in the morning, and I didn't want to get up here. It's like a six hour flight almost from where I live, maybe five and a half, but I didn't want to start my day that early or just miss some of it. So I decided to come out here now, it's Wednesday, and maybe it's a little bit less busy out here. I don't know. I'll just flip the autopilot off as we go over this, just so it's not overworking itself with this little bit of side-to-side -side bumps. So we may or may not be talking with the CTAF service here, basically dead cow traffic. Once we're within five nautical miles, there's a good chance that we might be on with dead cow control which is just somebody standing on the ground with a handheld radio. Far side of the mountain with all the bumps. These little valleys right in here, don't, they don't have any like shrubbery or anything like that would be a lot of fun. Now this is not a turbo, so density altitude be here would be pretty high. I'm already at 7,300 feet, so I bet you it's 9,000 foot density altitude. I'd probably need a pretty long patch of grass to be able to take off with this thing, I think. Especially because I'm full up fuel. My baggage compartment is almost full. Well, I mean, it's full, but maybe not on weight wise. And we'll start working our way back down to 6,500 feet just so that we're 
on our even heading, heading out west. And if you're wondering what this is, or I've had a bandage on here as well, when I was doing the um, condition inspection on this thing, I stuck my arm on the exhaust, stupidly, and fried it. Not the first time. About 10 miles out of the first reporting point. So, we're going to go ahead and make our call. Dead cow traffic, hitbox 24 Kilo Bravo, 10 miles east to the southeast of Saddle. And bound for landing with Tango. So, just kind of looking at here, I've got about 105 miles an hour indicated, and I'm showing 120 on my actual ground speed. Uh, which lets me know that the winds are kind of coming out of, well, the east-southeast area. So that would mean that if there's nobody here to whatever guide me in today, because it's maybe not as busy of a day, I'm going to assume that I'm going to be landing to the south, which means I'm going to be going to Saddle, West Point, and then a right downwind for the south right runway. So I'm guessing this right here is the Saddle. Well, considering it is a Saddle. <laughs> And that's where I switch over to 122.72. We'll just go ahead and go through all of our landing. Make sure switches, I don't have anything. Radios, we've already got set up and we'll switch over here in just a second. We're at 6100 now. Once we get past the saddle, we'll drop on down to 5,000 feet. Sure it's beautiful out here though. The rest of the flight was pretty boring. It was There was no grass, there was no bushes, it was just white and brown dirt. That is it. Well, if the winds are nice, we'll come in at 60 knots. Hopefully this landing will be a little bit better than my last landing. I've been doing really good landings. I was practicing wheel landings well in my last video, and um, this past week I've just been practicing wheel landings. And they've been going really well, except for this last one. That was the only one. Kind of got a little bit of a bounce. So this area, Reno's right over here. I'm sure that this area is a lot of the area that Trent Palmer flies around. I'm not sure if this is all BLM land or if he's come out and landed on any of this, but it looks like there's some horses. They don't look like cows, those look like horses. And hopefully I might be able to go on a flight um, with Trent and he might be able to run me down and give me some pointers and things like that, flying the kit box. That might be helpful for me, you know? Dead cow traffic, kit box 24 Kilo Bravo, saddle at this time with information tango. All right, I'm guessing that that's the big huge lake that we're going to. West Point's basically the end, the corner piece out here. So we're gonna go there first. Dead Cow Control, Kitbox 24 Kilo, Bravo, Saddle, this time information Tango, heading to West Point. All right, we're going down to 5,000 feet. We'll remain at 5,000 feet all the way through. 122.72. Just verifying that that is it, because I don't hear anybody. 122.72, 122.72, that's it. Got another plane coming into West Point here in a minute. The rep is good. If we have to go around, it's just power up 20 degrees. Back to 20 degrees. I don't know. I don't really have 20 to the second notch, basically. I don't really have degrees on this thing. Yep, looks like all the traffic is coming in, landing to the south, so we'll just follow along. We go to the edge of this and then just follow along the north, kind of the, yeah, I guess the northwest end of the lake bed. There's 5,000 feet, we'll remain here for now. I don't hear anybody on the radio though. So this is probably gonna be a little easier coming in today than it is tomorrow. Because I think everybody's gonna be coming in tomorrow. Get our traffic, Fox 24 Kilo Bravo, West Point this time. All right, we've got the other traffic in sight, turning base. I still don't hear anybody though. I don't know. Oh, there's like nobody even out here right now today, so. All right, he's short final now. And he's landing right about where those vehicles are, looks like. 
Dead cow traffic, inbox 24 kilo, Bravo, right downwind. All right, so they're going all the way down, turning around at the very end. No other traffic out here. Now they were landing on that, but I'm kind of confused at why they landed on the bigger runway. I can't really tell. We're supposed to land on the right runway. That's all I know. That's what it said. All right, well, let's go ahead and slow on down. Dead cow traffic, Kipfox 24 Kilo Bravo turning right base for the south runway. All right, I am not, they said there's like flags or something differentiating between the runways. I don't really see, okay, I guess it's the one that by those vehicles is the one I want. Yeah, I don't see any other runway, so let's do that one. I'm at 60 knots. Dead cow traffic, Kid Fox, 24 Kilo Bravo, final south runway. All right, checklist is complete. All right, I... I don't really see which one is the runway. I see flags, one, two, three, but these guys were landing on this one here, so I can't really tell, to be honest. Oh, well, it's not busy, so who cares? Let's go to the end. Not really sure where to go. Well, it's a good thing I'm coming in here when there's nobody out here, so I don't make a fool of myself. I have no clue where I'm supposed to park or anything. Like I said, if you want to see some content out here at the High Sierra Fly-In, consider subscribing. Like I said, I'm going to be making some videos, talking to other people with airplanes, things like that, having a good time. Thanks for joining me on this little flight. First time for me out here. See you guys next time.